Section 8 Housing for Low Income, otherwise known as Housing Choice Vouchers. What you need to know and some major changes coming to this program. I have all the details for you in this video, so let's get into it right away. But if you haven't done so yet, or if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button right down below the video, as I'm here for you each and every day with all of these details as things are changing very rapidly. I know it's really confusing trying to determine what is actually going on out there as things are changing so fast, but don't worry, I'm doing all the research as I distill it all down into these short videos, which I deliver a few times every day so that you can stay tuned as to what's going on and so you can take advantage of these programs and all the changes as they are popping up. So again, thanks so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. I'm here working on your behalf to help you out in any way that I possibly can. So hit that subscribe button right down below the video if you haven't done so yet, and let's get into this right now. All right, so the Section 8 program is actually a very big program. It's very complicated. It can be confusing at times, and it does have a lot of intricate details. So this is probably going to be one of a few different videos that I produce on this topic simply because we want to take it a little bit slow. We want to break it down and make sure that you're taking advantage of all these different aspects. If you are eligible to be part of this program, you certainly want to do it because there's a lot at stake here. And ultimately, if you can be eligible for this, you probably want to grab some, right? So let's get into it and talk about the details that we want to discuss in this video, as well as, like I said, those major changes coming to this program that'll likely impact millions upon millions of people. So, the Section 8 program, just a quick little tidbit, just in case you're interested. The Section 8 program actually came out of the Housing Act of 1937. So some people have always wondered, hey, where does this Section 8 name come from? It's actually out of the Housing Act from 1937. So just in case you want to impress your friends, there you go. You can tell them that little tidbit of information, right? <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this a little bit further and discuss what this actually means. So the Section 8 program is actually a program that sets up housing for low income individuals and families and it gives you the choice to choose what type of housing that you want which is actually really cool so let me talk about this a little bit further so this program is actually set up for like I said individuals and families who are low income which also does include yes seniors the elderly people with disabilities and just people who are maybe low income so it's an awesome program I and mean, realistically but there's a few problems with it, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But there's actually a lot of really good things about this program. So one other cool thing about it. So they could call it how uh, they could call it Section 8 or there's also they call it Housing Choice Vouchers. Now, a lot of people just refer to it as Section 8. But basically what it means is that they give you the ability to choose the type of housing and um, wherever you want to live. So they give you that flexibility. If you want to choose a single family home and you're uh, you're eligible to receive that, that would be amazing. And you can do that. If you want to choose a, a townhouse or a condo, again, you can do that. If you want to choose an apartment, again, you can do that. They give you the flexibility to choose the type of housing that is best for you, maybe your family family, you and your spouse, whoever it happens to be, and they give you those options, which is actually really, really nice. So as of right now, there are over 5 million people who have Section 8 that are living with uh, in Section 8 housing right now. So again, as you can see, this is a pretty big program. There's a lot of people that are encompassed within this, over 5 million people as of right now. So one of the cool thing about the program as well, there's multiple different cool things about the program, but I'm just pointing out a few right here in this video. Now, one other cool thing about this too as well, is they give you the flexibility to live wherever you want. It does not need to be located within a subsidized housing uh, development or area. So you could choose virtually anywhere, right? So. Um, I think all of us do know that sometimes there are like certain subsidized housing areas, maybe like apartment buildings or different areas within a city that's like all subsidized housing. You're not required to live there with Section 8, right? You could be living anywhere else. You could be living smack dab in the middle of just any old neighborhood. It does not matter. Um, so kind of cool thing, right? So basically what they do is they allow private landlords to actually enroll in this and accept housing vouchers. So therefore, a private landlord who's somebody who maybe owns a house, maybe they own a, an apartment building, maybe they own a townhouse or a condo, something like that, they could accept a housing voucher and let somebody who is already been accepted into the Section 8 program to live in their home 
and the Section 8 program pays for the vast majority of that rent. Again, we'll go over some numbers here in just a minute. So it's actually a really cool way for private landlords to get in on this program, help out some low income individuals, get into the home which in which they desire in an area in which they desire and feel really proud and excited about where they're living. So another really cool thing about this program. So in general, again, I do know that this varies quite a bit, but just in general, in most instances, uh, somebody who is accepted into the Section 8 program pays about 30% of the rent um, out of pocket. So again, I know that that varies. Sometimes it might go up to maybe 50% or maybe less than that. It could be to, uh, potentially fully paid for. Again, it's variable by quite a bit. So I'm just saying in general, it's about 30%. Let me give you just a really quick example to better understand these numbers. Let's just say that you move into... Um, I don't know. Let's just say you move into an apartment. I'm just giving an example. It could be a single family. It could be a condo, townhouse, whatever. I'm just saying, let's just say an apartment. Let's just say, for example, the rent is $1,000 every single month. And let's just say that you've been approved for 70% coverage, as in they're going to pay 70% using that 30% that the Section 8 individual would need to pay out of pocket. So here's how this would break down. The rent is $1,000. Well, the Section 8 or the public, uh, sorry, the public housing agency would pay the landlord $700 and then you would be responsible for the additional $300 to make up the entire $1,000, right? So that just a really quick uh, mathematical example right there of how that plays out. So here's what else is cool about it. The, uh, the public, so they actually have an acronym for this. It's PHA, which actually stands for Public Housing Agency. By the way, they're all over the place. I'll talk about this here more in just a second. So they actually pay the landlord directly. So let's just say in this example I just gave you, if you have a lease with this landlord, they actually, they send the check right to the landlord every single month on your behalf. And then of course, whatever you would be uh, responsible for paying, of course, you would have to pay that, you know, to the landlord as well. So again, it's nice that you don't have to worry about any of it. You don't have to wait for the, the check to come to you and then you to pass it on. It's just nicely paid for you kind of behind the scenes, which is actually a really nice thing. One less little piece of paperwork that you need to deal with each and every month. Let's be real. Who likes paperwork, right? <laughs> Not a fan for the most part, right? Um, but yeah, that's just one more thing that you don't have to worry about. So pretty cool. Now, generally as well. So here's how the, the Section 8 program is actually administered. Again, it's a very big, kind of complicated, can be confusing topic. The Section 8 program is actually federally funded through HUD. They take that money and they send it on to public housing agencies in the local area, and then they work with private landlords to send those monthly rent payments on to them on the behalf of the Section 8 recipients. So as you can see here, there's a few different agencies that the money flows through. You don't really need to understand that, but I just wanted to let you know how the process actually works for those rent payments to actually be sent out and who actually funds this program program. The federal government is all federally funded. All right, so let's quickly talk about the eligibility of Section 8 and who can actually grab some of this housing assistance. So here's what it comes down to. Generally, somebody has to have an income that is at 50% or less of the median household income in that county or that metropolitan area. However, by law, PHA, as in public housing agencies, need to reserve 75% of their vouchers for those individuals who have an income of 30% or less of the median income in that area. So as you can see here with this provision, the vast majority of these vouchers are actually going Going out to the lowest income individuals and families out there, which is actually a really good thing because let's be real, I've seen the comments down below. A lot of people in this community are living on a small fixed income, a lot of times from Social Security, maybe SSDI or retirement, survivors or SSI, VA, or maybe just low income. So it's nice to see that these Section 8 vouchers are actually reserved for the lowest income individuals because let's be real, these are the people who need it the absolute most, right? So let's quickly talk about some major changes that are coming to the Section 8 program. Now, again, all of this is still up in the air at the current moment because nothing has been passed yet. However, Congress is actually working on right now 
tens of billions of dollars to help out the Section 8 program and ultimately get that waiting list down to zero. Because I think many of you in this community recognize, and anybody who's been looking into Section 8, there's a lot of times a huge waiting list. And when I say huge, a lot of times the waiting list can be years long for some people. That's not a good situation. I've seen comments down below on previous videos where some of you have reached out in this community and you said, hey, I've been on the waiting list for three years and I'm still waiting. So yeah, this is a major problem. However, Congress is actually working on a bill right now that would actually send out more money, like billions and billions of dollars to help get more Section 8 housing and make sure that this waiting list for all of these people that are currently waiting right now is all picked up and that there's nobody on waiting lists anymore more. That would help out a lot of people who are waiting on a list to get into Section 8 housing or to help them out in a way right now. However, as I mentioned, all of this is still up in the air right now because the bill has not been passed yet. However, there's about $127 billion available for low-income housing, including Section 8 vouchers and all kinds of things for low-income housing. There's a lot of money sitting there, and if this actually does get passed through, it could be a really good thing for a lot, a lot of people, millions and millions of people. Now, one other quick note here. At any given time in the United States, there's about 600,000 uh, homeless individuals. So one other thing that they want to do with this uh, money that I just mentioned, the $127 billion, they basically would be setting up enough housing to take pretty much everybody who is homeless at any given moment, 600,000 people, off the street and into a home. So how cool would that be? I mean, seriously, $120 billion would basically take everybody who may be homeless and give them a nice home to live in. Not bad, right? And not only that, those people who are waiting on the waiting list to get into Section 8 or possibly waiting for a bigger home or to transfer, things like this, you could probably do that. So there's a lot of money at stake here and some major changes that may be coming as a result of what Congress is currently working on. Now, provided they actually get it done. If they don't get it done, well, then things may change. And unfortunately, the program may continue to exist at its current uh, level and its current state that it's in right now. Now, again, don't get me wrong. The program is get great. It's a good thing, but yet it's kind of unfortunate how many people are still waiting for this program and it's so limited. There's so many more people that want to take advantage of these housing choice vouchers. But unfortunately, a lot of times with everything going on, the waiting list is so incredibly long that some people might look at it and say, well, I don't feel like waiting for three years or two years. I want to do something right now or, you know, relatively soon. And unfortunately, in some instances, that may not be the case for some people. So again, it's all determines on the area in which you're located as far as you know, how many housing units are available? What's the population in your area? Is there a, a big waiting list? There's a lot of different factors. So one area may not have a waiting list at all. Meanwhile, other areas may have a three-year waiting list, right? It all depends on location and uh, kind of populations in that area. Demand, of course, is also very important. So let me quickly tell you where you can go to actually apply for this and look into more information. But of course, make sure you're subscribed down below because I will have more dedicated videos talking about Section 8 and all of the details about this as it is a really big program. All right, so if you want to look into this a little bit further, feel free to look up your local PHA, which again stands for Public Housing Agency. They're the one that you can contact in regards to Section 8 in your local area. Again, this is gonna be different regardless of where you are. It's gonna be different for everybody because there's gonna be local offices in your area. So check that out. Uh, public Housing uh, Agency is what you wanna look up. Otherwise, you could always just look up HUD. HUD, um, they would be like the major, like the main office, and you could like uh, you can contact your your local HUD office if there happens to be one. Um, otherwise, they can probably redirect you. So, a lot of resources here, and I hope this helps you out. But make sure to stay tuned as I'll have more details and more videos coming out on Section Eight and all of this housing assistance and rental assistance and all of these other things that are going on. I want to make sure that everybody's being looked out for right now and that I'm giving you information that you can take advantage of. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button right down below the video. It's totally free to do so. And I'll be here for you each and every day to help out in any way that I can. Feel free to go back and check out any of the other 2000 videos right here on the channel. Enjoy. I'll catch you again later in the next one.